Kia ora and welcome to Aotearoa on this full moon eclipse. And one of the most powerful passages in our and in our yearly cycle, this this passage is, you know, we're on the coattails of Ramadan. Um, Galangun Kunangan, Niepi. We must be very close to Diwali. And we have Equinox. We're entering an eclipse sandwich, our full moon eclipse. Two weeks, we have our solar eclipse across that tracks across the US. And in the middle of that, we have Easter. So it's one of the most powerful passages and cauldrons of transformation that operates a bit like a pressure cooker on our systems and the planetary body. So the journey we're going to go on today will help us harmonize our systems with what is unfolding on the planetary body and also give us a little conscious understanding of what's happening in the ether and deep in the earth. So let us begin by aligning our bodies. Again, if you're just coming into land, if you've had a busy day, if we're a little discombobulated, I invite you to stand up, sound, breathe and move throughout this process. Listen to your body as you come into alignment and harmonic with your own soul. So aligning physical, mental, and emotional bodies. With all pervading soul, higher self, and over soul. And definitely if you're new to the circle, I invite you to sound, breathe, and move throughout this process. Helps align your body, make space, and come into coherence so that you may more easily receive the information that will support your soul embodiment and evolution. Sinking oh. a luminous thread from your root, your base, your womb space, down through the floor the soils, the sands, the bedrocks, the waters, into the molten core in the heart of Gaia. Connecting into that primordial elemental energy of creation and inhaling it up, expanding with sound on the out breath to expand through the pelvic bowl. Ooh. Inhaling again through the root, the base, the womb space, up through the feet, the legs, the thighs, the hips, into the belly and expanding with sound in the belly. Oh. On the next inhalation, inhaling that energy once again. Up through the feet, the legs, the thighs, the hips, the pelvic bowl, the womb space, the belly, into the heart and expanding it with sound in the heart space. Oh. For those that are familiar with their earth star, acting the baiting the earth star, one foot beneath the feet, connecting to the dive through the divergent meridians of the planetary body. And connecting with that primordial elemental energy in its infinite potential as its structure too is evolving and inviting those primordial elemental energies up through your own individual pillar, first of all. Inviting those elemental energies to cleanse, clear, and purify. To rejuvenate, to regenerate, and to recalibrate 
as our carbon-based structures are becoming crystalline through this evolutionary journey. All the way up to the soul star, one foot above the head. And as we activate that soul star, we're inviting in the cosmic energies down through our pillar to mix and mingle with the earthly elemental energies for we are terrestrial and celestial. And our ability to fully be here as an integrated multidimensional being requires an infiltration of energies from both the cosmos and the planetary body. As we support the evolutionary process and the evolutionary process supports us. And surrendering through the core of source in the heart of Gaia, imagining the planetary body to be in the pelvic bowl and surrendering unto the planetary body. Softening, surrendering. Feeling that support and the unconditional love of the planetary body. Knowing that we are supported from this space and for those of us that support others, when we are in this space, they too are supported from this space. So it rewrites the way we hold holding space for it is no longer required in the old way of that practice. We are held by this space and when we are surrendered through the frequencies of the new earth architecture, everyone else we encounter is held through the space and supported. And that's where magic happens. Surrendering through the core of source in our own heart space. Mm. Surrendering through the core of source in the heart of the sun, imagining the sun also to be in the heart space, our solar selves. Oh. And surrendering through the core of source in the heart of the moon. So the moon in its perfection and its ancient structure of Taya. As all the parts become one under this sun within these bodies. Activating our solar and lunar disks. And harmonizing our systems with the solar disks of the planetary body that are already activated. In Lago Atlan, Lago Titicaca, and Uluru. Mm. And surrendering through the core of source in the galactic center. You may wish to visualize the galactic center in the pineal gland, our gateway to God, the all-seeing, the all-knowing, that part of ourselves that resides outside of time. Inviting you to inhale, exhale with sound, your own unique sound song soul signature, strengthening and fortifying your pillar, first of all. Oh. And on the next inhalation, exhaling with sound as we harmonize our pillars at the specific points on the planet where we are meeting from today. Oh. 
honoring the guardians of the land where we are walking today. May we come into service from and for And inhaling one more time, and on the exhalation, harmonizing our unified field and surrounding our planetary body with love. Mm -hmm. I hand you over to Casey. Thank you, family, for being here as we stay in connection in this beautiful, beautiful unified field that we have created. Breathing deeply into our human selves, we're going to step more fully into our light bodies. Anchoring our lights, connecting to Gaia one more time. We're going to welcome Gaia into the space, her consciousness. Welcoming the guardians of the four directions to come and take part in the circle as well. All of the elemental beings that we interact with on a daily basis coming forward. All the elements of air, water, fire, wind, ether, recognizing that we are all part of each one of these. Welcoming into our circle at this time, the dragons, the cetaceans, the galactic consciousness of each of these, our transforming guardians that help us to shift and change and to advance on all levels when we are ready to take part, to take flight, to take to the oceans of our hearts. Welcoming in that beautiful V consciousness, which we connected to, anchors us out to the unified field of the universal consciousness, the consciousness of one, unity, love, harmony, joy, bringing in those vibrations more fully into our human selves. Welcoming into the circle at this time, our galactic families, our councils of light, the ascension councils that wish to take part in the information zones that wish to come forward at this time. Understanding that we are at a pivotal point in our ascension process, a cosmic focal point in this day, as we are in the eclipse season, bringing forth those energies of the moon first to more fully anchor with the moon vibration, the moon essence, the essence of being open, receiving that feminine energy that which we have in each one of us. Recognizing that Gaia herself, the vibration of is changing she is more open at this time to receive those solar codes that wish to come in. As each one of us is an echo of Gaia, we too are open to receiving those solar codes which are coming in more beautifully at this time. Allowing our solar essence to turn on, to receive the codes and to understand the information coming forth through the sun. Through the generation of seven suns, the information is not new, it is old, it is ancient, it is turning on our primordial selves, our creation selves. We are stepping back more fully into that creation zone as we further our consciousness and step forward on our ascension paths, asking our human bodies to shift and change as well as we connect to the heartbeats of Gaia, feeling her heartbeat more strong, fully developed as she beats, we beat as well to match that frequency, syncing up our physical bodies. We merge with her to receive the codes she has to give as well as the sun. 
allowing both songs to come into our systems and creating this beautiful harmony, allowing us to be grounded at all times, to be unwavering, to be in sync with the messages that she brings forward, understanding and riding the waves of change, knowing when to dip under the water and when to come up for air. She has all of our information. And when we are in sync, there's no worry, no harm to come to us. If we are in balance with Gaia, we are in balance with ourselves. Stepping back more fully into the circle now. We're gonna come back into our human selves, allowing the circle of information to continue, allowing what wants to come forward to come forward in the circle of family, of harmony, of soul tribe. We are ready to share and receive. Our hearts are open. Our columns are connected at all times to source. Receiving the information that wants to come forward in the circle today. We are open, we are ready. Coming back to our human selves, breathing a little bit and adding movement to the human bodies. We will stay in this channel of communication and allowing our human bodies to take on a little bit more density. Coming back to yourselves and breathing in a little bit deeply, staying open in your hearts. We will come forward in our next chapter of the circle. Open your eyes when you're ready. Thank you, Casey. And speaking of our human bodies, never before has our personal practice been more important than it is now. particularly when there is so many shifts and changes going on on a planetary and cosmic level. If we want to stay centered, grounded and aligned, that morning practice, that evening practice, whenever the personal practice um, has space in your daily life, to pause and make that a priority. Many people come to me at meetings and they're out of integrity in their own alignment. So often we have to start our meeting by bringing them into integrity with the, through the bodies. And it's amazing how when our bodies are in alignment, that integrity of that alignment enables the clarity of the soul wisdom to come through. And we don't need to look outside of ourselves for the answers, for it all lies within. And with the integrity of the alignment, we have the clarity to be able to receive that information. My morning practice <laughs> has extended to three hours on different times. Now I can kind of get it all in about an hour and a half. And it will vary according to each day, whatever whatever she wants on the day. But, but a regular practice is first thing in the morning to hydrate the body with one liter of water and quality spring water, earthly water that you have access to, or if not, the best alternative. And I've found Kangen waters to be very supportive when I do not have earthly waters to drink. Hydrate the body and empty the bowels. Chinese medicine will tell us the bowels can be vacated or optimal time is between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. Evacuate the bowels. Don't hold on to shit, basically, <laughs> and empty out what you don't need. Then I have a combination of brushing the body, it, particularly for people who may be living alone, it's really important to keep our somatic system activated. So brushing the body with a body brush is very energizing and very stimulating. 
and very soothing for the sensual system and it, it ignites it in many ways and breath work oxygenate the body that might be a standing up lying down sitting down practice whatever it is for you but when we engage with breath work we also oxygenate the body and cleanse and clear and purify any stagnant energy out of it and then i usually have a combination of qigong and yoga and or dance whatever it is that my body needs to come into harmony other tools i have for this journey is a roller rollers are really useful and they work with the fascia of the body often people think they have short intense muscles but really it's the fascia the cling wrap in the body that is tight it's shrunk because it hasn't been used our bodies um, ideally for this journey of embodiment and evolution we want to have bamboo bodies we want strong and flexible bodies fit and flexible and the other great tool I have is actually a single hammock which operates as a hanging belt to do inversions without putting pressure on the spine as our yoga inversions do when we do headstands or handstands but simply hooking our hips into the inversion turning upside down and literally it does it elongates the spine and our main trunk line energy system so these are all tools that we can explore when we land into our bodies after the dream time when we come fully integrated into our animal bodies for our daily activities without losing connection to our cosmic selves because that's where we get to make art of life and become the architects of our new earth in this extraordinary cauldron of creation right now that we have so i am sharing that today with emphasis because we're in this pressure cooker and there's a lot of people popping under the pressure as everyone is being asked to level up, whether we're leveling up into our next level of embodiment or just beginning our journey or have been on our journey and kind of plateaued, maybe kind of stuck in a whirlpool. This pressure cooker is taking place so that we can pop out of that work and into the next level of our journey and service and embodiment and play and pleasure you know the once I've done all my practice and I'm aligning those bodies you know I'm aligning and offering myself in service to the greater good of person people and planet according to the divine plan and divine will infused with health wealth and abundance play passion and pleasure conscious community deep intimacy and love creativity spontaneity and the collaboration that we're here for And there has been so much happening since we last met. It feels like these two weeks are definitely two months in, in what's transpired in the space in between. And perhaps I'll share my experience and codes from my experience first and then ask Olga to come in and share hers because we were weaving together um, in, in the work weaving that took place um, my mother lives here in Whangarei which I have worked for many many years with what is a also a galactic gateway of Whangarei and I have had on my wish list to go scuba diving out at Tafatirahi the poor nights and I haven't done it and I've been waiting to go with my sister and it hasn't happened, but I got, it's happening now. And I thought it was going to happen on Sunday, but no, it needed to happen. 
last week on Wednesday. So I'm like, okay, off I go out to Tafatira. And I had not visited these islands for 33 years. And I thought that was interesting. It was 33 years ago when I was crewing on a yacht on a foot of luxury called Divine Decadence <laughs> on, on the East Coast in New Zealand for a redneck from South Carolina, which was another lifetime within this lifetime and a great adventure. And that was the last time I was out there. And I had forgotten the beauty and the uniqueness of this particular group of islands that connects through to Coromandel, the Crystal Peninsula. That's kind of the bit of the North Island of New Zealand that goes off to the side. And it's the remnants of an ancient volcanic eruption. And I'd completely forgotten that it was also the location of the largest cave in the Southern Hemisphere on our planet, which of course sparked my curiosity. And I was also reminded that why I prefer diving in tropical waters because the cool Pacific Ocean is very refreshing at this time of year. However, we went on, we had one dive and then we ventured inside um, the cave, which is absolutely spectacular and the most incredible natural sound dome I feel I've probably ever been inside. And it makes somebody want to sing, even if they're not a great singer. But to sound and tone in there was incredible. And, and another dive. And I was excited. I was cold. My body was contracted. So although I was present for much of the work, I didn't actually receive the information until I got home, warmed my body, relaxed and expanded, and then the information could come through. And what we were weaving with out there at that time was reactivating the inner earth gateways. We talk about the galactic gateways and the inner earth gateways, all that were closed down at the time of the fall. Many of the gateways were closed down um, consciously and carefully not all were able to do that many were compromised so many of us have been on a journey for many many years um <laughs> evicting the the squatters out of the gateways and um and restoring them to operational order for this particular time on the planet and what took place while we're out there was and with weaving with olga in peru was the reignition of the inner earth gateways and it was rather large and has taken quite some days to integrate. And let me hand you over to Olga to share her postcards from Peru and see if there's any more subtitles to come through. Yeah, it was, it's really interesting because we didn't we were working together and we were aware of this, but we didn't have time to share what we experienced. So it's really interesting uh to synchronize our subtitles as i'm saying uh yeah so it's really interesting because I, i'm in cusco and i was guided precisely to be on that day even though i didn't feel like to be in saxai woman which is like a huge uh huge archaeolog archaeological site here and i didn't know that you will be at that day diving so it was really surprising because I was writing to you, you know, you are here, part of you is here walking with me uh, and it's really huge and you're writing, yeah, and I'm going to dive in a moment. So it like made total sense, the choreography of that. Uh, and what happened in Saxai Woman was pretty, pretty large. Uh, it was just like exactly also like opening the a galactic gateway, but it was I'm even like shaking right now and I'm trying to talk about it because it's still really impacting my system. So it looked like uh, there was a 12 galactic dragons who were opening this galactic gateway. Uh, and like the energies which were 
starting to pour through this gateway were really, really intense. I don't know if I've seen anything like that before. So I was just like sitting and watching. Um, and what I could feel at that moment was that th there is a lot of things which were happening there, but like two qualities of the energies which were coming in was one, it was just like the protective energy for the earth. And it was going like immediately to like inner earth and inner earth core and almost like igniting the same energies which were embedded in in the earth but somehow inactive it felt almost like um activating immune system of the earth immune to all the interferences um and things like that but like interferences from the galactic level so it needed like kind of galactic vaccine to um or immunity and it felt like it was creating some kind of a shield on the level of like inner earth around the earth and like kind of like larger <clears throat> larger one and the other thing was it was kind of like galactic codes for um undistorted pure pristine original version of masculine energy which was so beautiful that I was just crying when I when I could feel this but what happened like I was alone on the top of the on the top of the hill there was no one there was this gateway opening those energies pouring in and out of the blue I don't know like 30 40 men came to the spot when the gateway was open like young really well built men I don't know it was like a soccer football player team or I don't know but felt, felt like that and they were standing exactly in the place when those codes for galactic masculine energy were entering entering the planet I was like what the fuck it was really uh, really amazing so it felt like they're really I don't know who they were I could hear that they were like English speaking guys but I don't know how they appeared there 40 of them and no one else um so it was really um really powerful and really beautiful and really really touching actually because it felt like oh, like this energy is the energy of which is able to like protect and take care of what is really important protect life protect love protect truth like really undistorted aligned focused powerful masculine energy it's just exquisite and my experience was that um i felt like i felt like when you dived um i felt it's at the moment i thought you dive i dived i don't know <clears throat> But it felt like it was like a huge blast of light. Like I could feel that you opened something, and uh, it felt from from my perspective and the situation which was happening there, it was almost like from this inner F. And when this gateway opened, like what was held there was those galactic codes for like undistorted feminine energy. And it almost like it could have been opened because the galactic masculine entered the planet and it was safe for this energy to be opened. So it also like, you know, the timing of our work was, it felt like it's just perfect. So it just, it opened, it came and then you dived and you opened like the gateways and like part of what was there was like this galactic codes for feminine energy. So it was really like, and of course, as it's happening, because somehow in um, work in Cusco, it's always connected with amazing storms. So like while it was happening or ending, like a huge storm came and there was like a tenders like all around the, all, all around the place. <clears throat> and right now I feel like I'm a little bit stupid, but I was just like following the energy. So I didn't think my mind was kind of like off. 
I was just doing whatever I felt to. <laughs> in the middle of the storm, I just stood on the highest point of Saxe Woman. And I was just standing in the middle of those like fenders. But there was like, and there was no one else because the weather was really like, um, but it felt like it was like really grounding the energy, really like, like it's really like a huge force. But the interesting thing was that on this top of the hill, I wasn't the only crazy person standing on the highest point of Saxe Woman. There was also one guy who was just standing there with me. I don't know who he was because then he disappeared, but we were standing on the two points of the high point of Saxe Woman in the middle of the huge storm, just like, I don't know, grounding, like conducting the energy, I don't know, receiving like for 20 minutes, no one else, just two of us. So it was really amazingly powerful, amazingly beautiful. Like what also happened, like I could feel that through this, through this galactic gateway, there were like emissaries of Galactic Federation of Flight and Andromedan Council. And they were like th this part, I don't, uh, I don't understand the details, but it was like the conversation, like they had like the guidance for all the galactic dragons, which were there and the humans, like all the like beings, which is like the galactic dragon and the human and like all in between. <clears throat> so it felt like there were some guidelines for all those beings, which, which were there. Um, and it, it reminded me that I also like a few days before I was working with like, um, with Polish field, which appeared to hold also like those protective energies for the earth from the very beginning, from like founder races, like from before many ice ages. So it feels like, like together with, you know, with this event, it really feels like protective field shield or immunity system of the earth is going back online. It's just like we've been working on setting all the architecture for new earth, but they are still ha happening like really distorted things on the planet. And it seems like this is the system which was originally was on the planet and became um, mute for some reason at some point. And it's just become coming, coming back online. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I, st I I can't breathe because it's still so like when I talk about it, I can still feel like the, you know, the power of those, those energies. So I'm still like trembling. Um, yeah, and it feels that what, what it is allowing is just like on a collective level, human level, individual level. Like again, this balance between feminine, masculine energy and like masculine energy to really be in a, and like talking about energies, even not like men, women, <clears throat> but also on individual level. And this, it felt also like this protective, those protective energies, which are about discernment. And some kind of, it feels like there's some tools for discernment there and then protecting. Protecting is also like for individuals. It's not just for the planet itself, but it's also like for, for individuals. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty something. I'm still coming back to, to life after this experience. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, Olga, and lots of koyopa, visceral truth bumps, can, can, um, confirmation mm. with all you shared. And one thing that you might find supportive, and this is a good um, example for everyone, when we're, when we're doing in service to the planetary um, and cosmic levels on operating from our multidimensional selves, 
what Olga you might find supportive now is some um, really good body work. Maybe make an appointment with Maria. Maria, mm. yeah. To make space, we actually have to make space, not just in our energetic, yeah. body, but in our physical bodies for the amount of energy yeah. that comes through. So when you're still having trouble breathing and still feeling the pressure of that, make more space. Mm -mm. I, I could not have been able to work the, and operate the way I do without the support of some of the world's best body workers. And um, mm -hmm. Marie is my favorite in the valley. So yeah. Give yourself a treat yourself to some self love and a session with her to help that. And should we go over to Casey and see what you'd like to add to that movie? Yeah. You both shared a lot of information. There's a lot of quotes coming through. Um, the first thing to share, Leanne, was that in your pictures that you posted online for your Facebook of your, your dive. And you posted the picture of the cave itself. Immediately, I saw the dragons that were hanging out with you in there. You had the inner earth dragons and you also had your galactic team of dragons there with you to do the work. Um, so that's beautiful to note that you had two layers, two different races supporting you for the work to be done. Um, the codes that Olga brought through, Olga, they were saying that you didn't have an option, a choice for you to be on top of that mound, that you needed to anchor those codes. And that you had been calling in a counterpart to do the work. So there was somebody that stepped forward to do that work to anchor with you. He's not necessarily your counterpart, but he was a counterpart to hold the field for you. So who he was was not important, but the fact that he stepped forward was very important. Um, and it felt like it was a pre-alignment for those gentlemen to come in and receive those codes, not understanding on the human level what they were taking in, but their souls had already been aligned to come and receive them at that time to receive the masculine energies to be anchored in to the human vessel, as well as to the earth is which was the work that you were doing. Um, and the guides are saying that we're gonna start to see more of the uh, galactic council showing up to do the work on the earth plane as well, because the field uh, of the dimensional separation is decreasing. So as the work continues, we'll start to see those light teams supporting us or feel them around us more, the galactic teams that wish to do this work with us. Um, and that um, the field you were talking about on Gaia herself, you were calling it an immunity field. She, they're showing it to me as a field for <clears throat> receiving the codes, like a, a buffer almost, not necessarily for the health of Gaia, but to receive the galactic codes and have a landing place for it to come and absorb in more slowly to receive um, on a deeper level so that they don't bounce off, so that they don't um, distort or get mingled up, that they're able to receive fully and then anchor all the way into the earth. It's like a, a gentling of the codes to come into the system of Gaia herself. Interesting. It is. I'm wondering if they have any more information for us regarding Poland in particular, because for a space of three, four years, I was taken to Poland seven times, Poland in the heart of Europe, to work with the people there and, and obviously with the land there. And there's, Olga touched on the topic very briefly um, during this, and it's, I always knew there was stories much older related to that land that was somehow connected to the reason of the German invasion in, in World War II. Like, so, you know, so I was managed to read uh, was that uh, it was the, like what I saw was there was a civilization set up by dragon founder races. So almost like the first on the planet or one of the first on the planet and like the original one with the original blueprints. So it's almost like under all those layers things which happen in Poland in the known history, unknown history, there is like the original, original blueprint from dragon founder races. This is what was coming. So this is pretty, pretty big. 
and what 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 I was able to like say and what was opening was this part, um, like this part of this immunity system, which was the original blueprint that like was allowing um, health on on the planet, health and a, a, um, I can't find a word balance health and balance for but it felt like there was something like original like one of the first things which happened on the planet and the blueprint of it and somehow this connects through to antarctica yeah yeah i felt it today it's exactly yeah that that's why this like uh, trip to antarctica needs to happen now because we are touching onto this level right now They're saying it's a timeline before the human timeline, though. It's um, the ancient codes. Uh, sometimes we see the humans act out the, the dragon wars or the races of the discordant energies that get filtered through the humans, that sometimes the humans just reflect what has already happened. Um, stepping back into Antarctica helps to uh, resolve those ancient timelines in order to bring back the purity of them. The crystal, kind of the crystalline codes, the dragon codes of the, the purest fire, the purest elements that want to come forward. Um, it's not it's not tied to the humans necessarily, although the humans uh, reenact what has already been happening. which connects through to the Kalahari San, who I had a meeting with in June solstice 2023, for they carry the codes of creation prior to manifestation. And they too were gathering at the same time in the Cedarberg Mountains, doing their trance dance, which literally restores the connection with creation of the primordial creation codes. Yeah. Wow. Maybe let's just pause there and see if anybody has any um, questions or contributions to the field of what's been unfolding. Well, this has been preparation to this eclipse passage. And there's many more pieces of the puzzle that will still unfold in the coming weeks and months. One thing that I was shown when the um, inner earth gateways were reactivated um, last week that on the eclipse of the sun in two weeks time the galactic ones will be coming back online around the planet that we've been working with and literally since the day that happened I've been um, had a had quite, had quite a heavy workload because the preparation of the restoration of our galactic gateways has already begun reinstating the correct guardians at the gateways for them to be open and functioning fully in a harmonic way and in a safe and secure way so that process has been done and i've been taken back to the triangulation of these gateways on different continents um, throughout the day and night ever since and this is all just preparation for in two weeks today and on friday good friday in our gregorian calendar i have to climb one of the local mountains maunga here which um, when we've spoken previously about the um, switches on the planetary switchboard 
this manga is more like a control panel for the planetary switchboard. So it's going to be very interesting um, what needs to unfold in that space. And that's all the information that I was, um, that my conscious mind needed to understand when I did a little pilgrimage out there to Riyatahi yesterday. So um, we'll see what needs to unfold. And I really feel like there is something to unfold here today between all of us, that there is like a reason we are who we are today. Like what I see is that our fields are creating between all of us and between spaces we are in kind of like a diamond shape, energetic structure above the Pacific Ocean. And there is an egg inside, golden egg. But I need subtitles because I don't see, I don't know what it is. Ah, thank you for that reminder, Olga. Yeah, one of the, the key pieces directly after the, the work on last week was that diamond, um, and I think it's what many are referring to as the blue diamond of Mu, mm. that, that um, came back online between uh, Hawaii, Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, Indonesia and Peru. Yeah. Then we've got Jan, our Bali Bean Man, that managed to join us today. And he's, Jan, you're our, our Indonesian anchor for today. So it's, <laughs> so thank you for being here with your big B heart. <laughs> and um, yeah, that needs to take place. Let's, let's ask how, if we, is there's anything we have to do? No. We have to be in the field of love. Maybe Casey can guide this one. Um, we're just going to receive an activation and it's holding some codes for us at this time. As we're standing in the field of unified love, Remembering that we once came from Mu, that we are Mu. Our hearts hold those keys that wish to be activated at this time. Allowing that diamond frequency to come flowing forth and watch that diamond as it begins to spin. It's radiance in the cosmos. And anchoring into our heart spaces, we receive a piece of it to come forward with us in our human selves, in our light body selves. Receiving it as a place to be centered in our hearts, holding the cornerstone for each one of us, allowing us to connect to that heart field instantaneously without a shift, without an opening of the gates. Just understanding that the activation is all you need. And taking those mood codes back into our solar selves, our galactic selves, our light body selves energetically and then into our human vessels, turning on the cells of our bodies to start the ignition, to start the ascension light body system even more fully. Notice that there's a blue radiance now to your field. At some point you will be emitting all the colors of the rainbow, but for today we give you the blue, the moo codes that wish to come back. And seeing that energy is connected now to Bali, to Hawaii, to the, all of the anchor points that are holding that diamond in place. As humans, you are allowed to travel to these places physically, but you do not have to go there physically. You can anchor into the space at any time. It's part of your creation zone. It's part of your remembrance. You hold those codes and keys already inside of you. Blessings, everyone, for you have received a beautiful gift today.
Thank you, Casey. And thank you, everyone, for being here to share, participate, and receive this gift for humanity and our planet at this time. And now I'm very curious why I was given the words tsunami warning to put on today on on today's meeting i thought that's a bit odd tsunami warning it's kind of like a bit of a fear thing but um but that's what i got so i put it up and maybe we can explore that for this passage is an energetic tsunami mm -hmm. we're 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 entering a passage of an energetic tsunami for deep cleansing purification and eclipses offer a reset an opportunity for us to reset and restore our original divine blueprints so the tsunami warning is coming for an invitation with an invitation to engage consciously through this passage to optimize it for our own evolution, our families, our communities, and for our growing community of conscious sisters and brothers and soul family and monadic galactic family around the planet. So it's an energetic tsunami. It's a tsunami of love, to restore love in our lives, personally, collectively, and planetary. Many refer to it as a rising of the phoenix. But as the phoenix rises, it's a return of the dove. Bringing peace back on the planet. And in many ways, it's preparation for the earth changes that many are beginning to receive visions of that are likely to unfold in the weeks to come. And as these earth changes unfold, there is nothing to fear, but rather go within, come deeply into the body in connection with Gaia, listen deeply. And for those that can listen and hear, and can communicate without fear will become the leaders of this transition, of this change. And that means each and every one of you that are gathering today and those of our sisters and brothers that will join us on this journey. There is nothing to fear from change. Let us embrace it. So rather than be drowned in the tsunami, grab a surfboard and the family and enjoy the journey and optimize this extraordinary potential that we have to collaborate with our planetary consciousness and the elemental forces of nature and creation. Does anyone else have anything else they would like to contribute or any questions for the field? Yeah, I, I can feel or hear like the message from those codes, galactic masculine codes, which came that they want to be used, that they are here to, to be used. And the questions and the questions are coming like what what you want to protect in your life, what, what you want to support in your life, how can you stand for your love, your truth, your life, what is really precious for you, how can you be this holding, protecting thing for the important, precious things in your life, 
and if you want for the planet and for bigger things but firstly really like like they're asking to really ask yourself this question like what is really precious for you what is really gentle for you what is really true in you and how how you can how you want to protect it support it backing it up so the practical practical use of galactic masculine codes <laughs> thank you and yes it's you know as creators of our reality we need to take full responsibility of every thought word and action and we were exploring this last week in our mastery of multi-dimensionality circle that with that comes a lot of responsibility not as a cross to bear of which responsibility has been in the past but an ability to respond when we are opening and connecting to our multi-dimensional selves and consciously engaging in this primordial cauldron of creation and the codes of creation prior to manifestation we need to be responsible for what we're creating and part of that responsibility is our own self-care and maintenance physically mentally emotionally and energetically These systems are like lighthouses. And when they come online, we have a responsibility to occupy them and take full responsibility for what we are creating, consciously or unconsciously. And if we're creating something unconsciously that doesn't serve, it's an inside job to resolve it. Learn what we need to learn and change the way we're walking in the world. But the only thing in life that's permanent is change. Mm. Is there anything else anyone else would like to contribute or any questions for the field before we close for our journey for today? Jacob. Well, I've been um, listening today. I've felt codes coming through, so I'd just like to share those. Ike tiana hu shamana tiana haya tu tia kadoniara shamato. Iti dia nama hiya shonokatiya mohu shu. Chutiara titiya mohini inia turu shokatiya rama shitiya turu. Okutia nia kotoria shia to no mohu shi. Shia tia rara rudo pia shamati no ho. Uto hutu de rara di tia rara kutmo huni. Hone nia kia shu riara tatukia. Anakatia to huno, huno no no tikia to humo to tira ko huno, huno mon nia katia ra to 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 beautiful thank you so much jacob that was <laughs> that was beautiful it's like a champagne blessing in my body <laughs> <laughs> and i love that quality champagne <laughs> where where in aotearoa are you joining us from today jacob from tomorrow yeah. wow way down south yeah, well, yeah, yes and no. And a couple of weeks, well, no less than a week or so, I'll be on Stewart Island. Oh, interesting. Yes. <laughs> and perfect, no doubt. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and Casey. Um, just a note about the Galactic Gateways turning back on. The guides are saying that it's the opportunity <clears throat> that as the galactic gateways turn back on, 
our gateways, our galactic gateways in our human bodies will also have the opportunities to turn back on. So keeping that in <laughs> mind, in order to have that happen, we need to clear out the density in our systems, which you were talking about. Our human bodies need to be in the right space so that we can have our galactic gateways open. Yeah. Thank you, Casey, and for that information from the teams. And, and I feel that's very much what's going to unfold in the weeks to come is is a, a great the great purification it's like you know we've been in the great purification for years and we're just about to go through the eye of the needle <laughs> so if there's anything that you don't need in your life physically mentally emotionally energetically is a great time to do a eclipse cleanse and make space for the new without having to fill it up with anything or anyone. Simply making space. And um... yeah, and it feels like it's a great time of letting go of those things, but it's not like the great time. Like there is rather no choice. Like we are not being asked if you want to let go of it or not. It's almost like <laughs> you can fight but it won't work so it's time of the choiceless choice and yeah, yeah we, we are so greatly supportive yeah and know that even if it might look odd or feel strange at the time um if we're surrendered into this journey then ultimately it's going to mm, that tsunami is going to land us I'm actually watching us coming in, surfing onto land and just stepping off the board and walking in the in the world a new way. And it's really beautiful. Yeah. And those colors of the boards are all different and the colors of the people are all different. And the one thing they have in common is their heart is turned on. And we are very much um, stepping back in Restoring the universal law of one. Wow. How beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in this circle, coming together as one in this circle, sharing of consciousness and information and codes. Thanking all our seen and unseen realms. And reminding ourselves that we are pillars of our new earth. And as we walk out in the world, we literally start to inform our environment rather than being informed by our environment in a very beautiful and subtle way that's much easier to digest sometimes than words. And let me hand you over to Casey as we come to closure today. Thank you, family, for joining us in Circle today. Thank you, Soul Tribe, for showing up. Well, Take our moment and thank our galactic tribes for being here, our supporters in the unseen realms, thanking our dragon tribes, our cetacean nations, our honeybee collectives, the higher consciousness levels that are with us always, permeating our consciousness stream, giving support on all layers and levels. We'll thank Mama Gaia for being here, for the elementals, all the layers of water, rivers and oceans, lakes, streams, our Apu guardians, the mountains, the guardians of all four directions, the guardians of the stargates that wish to be acknowledged. Uh, we will th say thank you to our inner earth teams that are starting to show more support for us now that we have a greater acknowledgement of them. 
They will be coming forward in the future directions as we more consciously merge with them, remembering that they are part of us as well. All of those portals that live in the inner earth and in the skyways, the galactic dragon portals that are all being activated at this time. This is a time of great change, a time of joyous celebration as we step forward. Each step that we take together as team humanity, we step into the new, we create that new world and we embody those codes of creation as we step into those creator beings that we are remembering on our cellular levels. In so much joy and gratitude for all that has transpired in the field today, in our circle, in our unified heart space, remembering that diamond code of Mu to take forward with us into your meditations, into your walking space, your walking human time. Connecting with the galactics on the human level, we merge the worlds together. We will now step back into our human body frames and begin to breathe a little more deeply. Feeling that inspiration and respiration happen in the lung space. Allowing oxygen to fill every cell of our body, remembering to give joy for our human vessels that help us to be on this earth walk, help us to be connected together in physicality in a way that some Galactics may not get to experience, we get to experience on a daily basis. Adding some gentle movement back into our bodies, we will come more fully anchored and we will come back into our unified solidary pillar, being your own pillar of light, no longer connected as fully as we were. You are always connected to source. And now you will be connected more fully in your human self. One last breath, giving thanks to all of our systems in our body. We will come back to ourselves and begin to open our eyes, joining the circle again. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Jacob, for your contributions. Thank you, everybody who uh, joined us today and have yet to join us. And as we return fully intact onto the Earth plane, may we remember we are here to play. Each and every day is the first day of the rest of our lives. And best enjoy our Earth walk and all it has to offer in these extraordinary earth suits. Much love to all of you. Go well. Remember to wax your surfboard and uh, we'll see you on the wave and hopefully see you in two weeks from now with a lot more adventures to share. Much love everyone until we meet.